like from, I'll touch it because I'm in this period. You know? That's what. That's the size of the ball that'd be going out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The trouble you get hit with that. The ladle, put a stick on it, and basically you're melting lead down. That's what this is. Cut the chunk off. Put it in that ladle over fire. Well, melts down. Ball mold. Yeah. That's what these come from. So making their own bullets. See? Pour it in that hole. Close it. Pour it in the hole. When it one fills up. Tap it. And you cut the sprue post off of it. Okay, that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mugs. Powder horns. As you can see, this is our fort. Fort de Chart. Oh. Right yes. there. Fort de Massac. Yeah. It's actually Fort Ascension. Ascension, yeah. Massac is English. Eh? English we do not English. like England. <laughs> <laughs> we do not oh. like England. Who did this? <laughs> England. England. Yep. Not yeah. Perfect. Wait a minute. Let me go. Oh. But anyway, <laughs> powder horns carry extra powder. So as you can see, Perfect. our cartouche box, where it carries like nine rounds, and these are ready to go. These are the cartridges. And if we would uh, actually. Have live rounds, there'd be a ball in the end yeah, of this. When you're done, you're at the right age to do some work. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Happy uh, Tan, uh, uh, I don't yeah. feel like doing that much work this morning. <laughs> so, when you're done, if you'll send him through the gates, why should I get the water? <laughs> Thank you. Another, another primer. This is clean your pan on your weapon. This is a powder measure. Legos? Yeah. What is a Lego? <laughs> I built mine out of wood. Eh? A stone. Eh? My fort stone. Lego. What is a Lego? You tell me what a Lego is. <laughs> Something some a couple hundred years in the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they wood? Me. Plastic. Uh, plastic. Yeah. Okay. Now. I don't know if plastic. Now, yeah, what is what is a plastic? I don't know. I had no oh, plastic. Now you really. <laughs> <laughs> now you really. Modern in the future. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll get on with it. This is a hammer to uh, like hammer your nap, your flints. That's tiny. Yes, but it's also oh, yeah, to just do the flints. I'll show you that in a second. This is a vice to take your gun lock apart. If you have one of these stuck down your barrel, you have to put this on a rod to retrieve it out of your barrel. This is called a ball puller. It's called a worm. And what it, 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 it's like a little bit of a worm, but we put a piece of cloth in there and we run it up and down the barrel. So all stuff to keep our guns clean. Flash guard. And this is a scraper for the bottom of your barrel. Okay. This tool right here is a screwdriver. Looks kind of strange to the new screwdriver, I bet, eh? Yeah. Well, this is used, and I'll show you here in a sec. As I do. But this is a piece of leather that would hold your flint in to your gun. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Wait. The weapon. Wait. Yeah, and plus it's got the. 69 Charlie Villa, eh? Now, you see where the flash guard is? Uh -huh. That piece right there, okay. this piece is right here, it's the leather that holds the flint in, okay, all right, this tool can take this off, that's what that's all about, three screws, one, two, three, with that screwdriver, take this band off, take this band off, and take that band off, and this bear will come off, that's all it is, as you can see, this has got a hook on it, this has an eye in it, so if I had to tighten it, I could put that in there and wrench it. And it's a little loose. Saw John, is this your weapon? So, well, anyway, we'll look more. I'll pull it back, it's at half cock. See that little hole right there? Okay. When we load a cartridge out of here, we would take, I would say, Desiree Lavec Le Dome, which means you've got to tear this with your teeth. You've got to have four good teeth in the first place. The first thing you would do, put your powder in there, and you close your bassinet. 
Then you bring it down to the side of the sword. And you put the rest of this down, paper, ball, and all. Pull this, your ramrod. And when I say bull ray, you ping it. Okay, so you're seating it. Remove it, bring it back up, put it right back into place, slide her back down, she's ready to fire. So, only is this one, your weapon? Only, wait, wait, only one only one shot? No. So, we can, I pinged it, it should wait. be ready to go. Wait. You're at full cock. This gun ain't going to go off, there's nothing in it. But if you see this, this is the flint, this is steel. If, that's right, right? Mm -hmm. Is it all the way back? Nope. No. No. There, it went back. full cop. All you're going to see is a flash or sparks. Okay? Ready? It ain't going to go off. See, we're standing on this end. Yeah, watch. See the sparks? Okay. One of them sparks catch the pan, powder in here. When it sparks, it shoots a little flame inside there and it sets the rest of the charge off. That's how this gun works. Nice. You want to feel how heavy this gun is? Have, have you ever heard flash in the pan? Yeah. No? So, okay. Pretty flash heavy? in the pan is you oh, see no. the powder go poof, but the gun doesn't go off. Oh. That's some heft. A little bit over nine pounds. It doesn't seem like much, but uh, uh, Christian just had a uh, 28 here, which is about a pound heavier. It makes a difference. Carry that around. Oh. Plus, back then the guys were only like 140, 150 pounds, so it so had to be in good shape. To five foot two to Jeez. five yeah. foot four was probably wood? average size is for a Marine. Pardon? Wood. Walnut? That is walnut, walnut. yes. Local. How high is this? That should be just about five. 60 inches, I believe. Yeah. Five, five feet. So, so you wouldn't be much taller than that. Correct. <laughs> the, only, the only requirement, if, if, if the captain hasn't told you to be a Marine, is you must have four teeth. I told him. Okay. I told him. I like how it's a requirement, though. Yes, it's great. that's the only requirement. I don't care about anything else, but you got to have four teeth. Yeah, even hockey players miss teeth. Right? <laughs> see, here's, here's the 28. That, uh, so you can see the difference in the model size. Oh, this is the fusil. Oh, that's, that's a fusil. Okay. The fusil over here. Oh, yeah. That looks like a big one. I was going to try and show you because <coughs> I saw this and I go, oh, I got another one. Yeah. But uh, the difference is on, on the 28, which is an earlier model of this, is you've got the curved butt plate. We have one. We're going to donate to you today. But uh, this was the premier weapon at its time. So. Unfortunately for us, for our time period, um, 1750, we would not have seen these here, uh, this far in country. Um, the war was over by the time they arrived. Okay, I'm going to go turn butter by Kathy. We thought you guys would keep your military. Um, some of them I'm did make it to the uh, to the continent, but it's probably so Quebec, is so what I've read. Yeah. This is a seven, uh, replica of a 1763 Charlotte, uh, no. made in Charlotte, France. I will eventually. Um, where we actually saw these was a little bit later. Well, I might yell for you. So. Again, you know, this is what we could get. Uh, like I said, we probably would we would have been carrying probably a 48 or, or 28 modification to a 48. Uh, they made modifications all over, at all times with these. So and this is a few. Yeah. This is a hunting like Back. a civilian. You got any other question, young man? <laughs> this is a little loose. I am the Capitan. That's why I'm dressed like, like, like I am. Yeah. Yeah. Captain, we're interested in what would be in the flask. What sort of liquid? Reproduction Probably liqueur, wine, okay. some kind of brandy or cognac. Okay. So we're, we're, I was wondering about yeah, brandy. This here. is at the right uh, the Cognac tea, mostly, I would uh, think. Which is it's heavier, more French. Cognac. Yeah. 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 Cognac. What'd you need? What? What? Well, when is it going to start? What? You started it. Yeah. You started it already. Yeah. You did. <laughs> you started it. Oh, yeah. The first guy here. <clears throat> As you can see, I'll, I'll compare you. Gary is a soldat. This is his small clothes. He's wearing his gaiters. He would normally not wear his gaiters on a regular day, 
But if he's out in the woods, he would. For the simple fact, we'd only get like one pair of socks or two pairs of socks a year. Think wow. about that. Two pairs of socks a year. That's why we started wearing moccasins. A little easier and softer on your feet. He has wool breeches on. This is wool. He has probably a linen shirt on and a cravat to protect his neck. Yes. He'd have a just a cord like I would, plain Jane. Okay. As you see, my sergeant. My sergeant has gold on his uh, gold trim around the sleeve up the arm there. Gold here. Gold on his pocket. You'd be all right. Just go ahead and talk. I'll point you out. Yeah, I think it's just the heavy metal, heavier wood. He's got his small clothes on. He's got wool and knee breeches. He's also carrying a knife. And leg. Uh, leg but this is what the militia would do. So, yeah, I'm so sure these were abusive. He's got his militia, tooth on. Militia here and stuff like that. I am a captain. As you can see, my coat is not marked. This is what shows off that I'm the captain. I have this blue and I have the gold. I have the gorget from medieval times. My sword. Well, uh, you can touch it, but don't stab nobody. Please. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little dirty on the end. I got stuck. Yeah, only yeah. officers had the sword. Must have been Terry. Right. What do you think of that? Or, or 50, or 50, 50, not not bad. Uh, I'd have to measure because I got a We used to have swords when we came over to this country. We had swords. We found them cumbersome in the woods. So we went to tomahawks. On our, mm -hmm. our cartridge, cartridge box, is a tomahawk and a bayonet. The, uh, but that, that was more of a, a tool for us. You know, you can chop with it, you can hammer with it. He, in, so. He's dressed basically, if if he put his cravado or his justice cord on, he'd be dressed basically for like ceremonies, parades, and stuff. If he was on regular duty today, he'd probably be dressed out of this stuff. You know, there was no women around us except for Native Americans, so basically he might just be in his shirt. Nothing more. Moxins. Might have his knee britches on, depending on what he's got to do. But this stuff gets hot in the summertime. How would you like to clean all that? Stuff? Well, yeah. it gets hot in the summertime. Real warm. You guys smell good, then. Yes. <laughs> we only bath though, what, twice a year in the spring and the summer. That's probably about it. Yeah, it'd be different. Would be blood. Our clothes. You know, we would only get this like every two years. Yeah. Shoes. That's why we started making our own moccasins because we don't get them out like, every two years. Can we wear our pair of shoes in a year? Yes. And then you've got to work with especially whiskey stickers. So, any other questions? Mike, which which one of these chairs is yours? That one. This one. Officer, the captain of the police. Any other questions? Probably. Sure. You're sure. You gonna join us when you get older? <laughs> we'll sign you up right now. <laughs> On Kids Day at, our, at, our, at Kids Day at our fort, we have uh, the, the captain of the police. He is you know, also you part of us, and he'll sign, like he'll sign kids up, he'll, he'll sign in their memberships you know, you and that stuff. Paper down mm -hmm. My son, who's in Nebraska, sound, you know, has done going, this. He sets up for Halloween, he puts up his like, wedge, and he's got a couple of skeletons sitting around, and he, he gambles with them. He'll tell the family, he says, you don't mind if I, I gamble with your kids. And they'll say, no, no. And they'll say, okay, he puts a piece of candy up there, and he says, put your candy up there. Like what? And that's just so you put your candy up there. What he has done is but he's I, taken again, two thing, round balls and flattened them out to make them dice. Uh, prime from, and from here, his dice has got like one first all the way around it. And nobody knows it. Uh, and but, his uh, and and the kids have the one so through the, six. So you can either tie them. Kind of discouraged, or I guess, for all the history. Yes. We play cards. The cards. We put all the face cards and the higher cards up on top. We dial from the bottom. For us. And they love it. And, and, and he signs them up in a journal. He signs them up. He says, "Now you are to report to Illinois Territory when you're 15." They're going like Illinois Territory. Yeah. Eight hours that way. <laughs> your fort, your captain will be coming out here to see you soon. If you don't show up. But yeah, we we love it. We do it all. My sons grew up doing this. They're both drummers. And the group, tambours is what we call them. Dropos or flags. So. But this is what we yeah, do for our hobbies like, and know, our livelihood, like and we explain stuff, stuff to you. People like you, young young men that mm -hmm. possibly could take over this yep. when I get old. 
and uh, we have found, in fact, this still has some lead on it. I noticed they're flat. We've drilled through all a white. couple of lead holes. French that. Bourbon King's but, colors. Well, there's a cross okay. there, but, these but it's are, very uh, hard. Very, yeah, very That's a French Marine so, flag, the red and yellow and blue one. I could probably install a black guard on this thing, too. The color of surrender flag, or is there no surrender? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably about the same size. Let me find yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's red. Okay. When I want, when I'm in a battle, and I want to draw attention to the commanding officer of the British, I'll either have my drummer do like a drum roll if I have one. If not, I'll wave this, which means I need to parley with you. And I'll go to the at Fort Massac in Metropolis in October. We have two battles. One sort of Saturday, one Sunday. Direction. Saturday we win. Um, Sunday we lose. Everybody goes, well, how do you know this? I said, are you speaking yeah. French? <laughs> <laughs> no. I said, we lost. <laughs> you know, we were dominant. We were powerful at the start of it. And then, you know, we started losing uh, supplies. Um, the British were coming in with better stuff than us. And we just lost. Just, we had so many wars going on that we couldn't contain this. And if you look at the way the French, you know, they build along the rivers, the Mississippi River, you know, Ohio, you kind of control, you try to control because the, the waterways, there's a lot of transportation that or you walked. Not everybody had horses and wagons, military models. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we have we have a great time doing this. You know, we're, we're getting ready. Us three right here, we're going to go to Fort Toulouse. It's a, it's like nine hours from here. It's a wooden stockade. There was no wars ever fought there, but it was like a cold war thing. The British were close. There's a presence we had there, so the British wouldn't come. And we had trading rights there. It was more of a trading. You were small. Yeah. It could fit into my the Fort Deschart if you've been there. It fits inside the parade grounds very easily. It's small. It's small wooden Now, now Fort Deschart was the, the command center of the whole Illinois country uh, at the time. So the, the hub of the center. And the captain here would have been overall a command and governor of the whole territory of, the, of, the, of Oil. Upper Louisiana. Oh, is that where you get like called, you kind of rough right. up the and with the main yep. place yep. being down in New Orleans? When, when you, you put know, it down, you get a nice to uh, communicate with the governor down there. Depends, the ball so, depends on where it's going. That's how he got his orders. So depends on where he the barrel watch everything. So if it's you know, on the right side, controls, they control the trade you know, and everything out of the That's what we always did. It's an amazing amount of territory. It's a lot of guys and not a lot of. You think about think about when they first started this, the states and that stuff. They just shot straight lines like to the Mississippi River, Virginia, all the way to the Mississippi River because there was no territory. And it's not until they started started separating and finding and combining that stuff. Uh, uh, we're. Some of our ladies are going to be cooking down there, and uh, you know, I think they're still waiting for you to uh -oh. get water. <laughs> they got work for you. They're going to do some washing, show stuff. We have Kids Day in, in the first part of May over at our fort. That's the first, like I said, we, we entertain kids with anything. A lot time. He and I went over there one time in the river. Right. You go over there and they actually had to make rope. It was yeah. really yeah. Nice. So yeah. They have a rope Remember that? Yeah. Rope you love that. Yes. Absolutely. They were all dressed up uh, on yeah, the inside. Like the Come visit us in June. Our big Almost rendezvous like in June. We have five uh, drum covers so over there. Like we have four of them, two of them like from Indiana, Lafayette. The 42nd and the tip of canoe. And then we have St. Charles who comes down, fife and drum, and then uh, Graf is a small group coming in. But we'll have like two to three hundred camps or so. Traders, the military will be there, and we do our flag presentations and all that stuff. So, uh, and it's open. I mean, it's like I think five dollars to park your car, but the rest is free. The food vendors are there. So, yeah, you'll be something to look into. Please come back and visit again. Come visit this place. You know, they have, go visit the museum that's set up. There's a uniform in there like, exactly like this. Got a flag exactly like that one in there. And later on today, we're going to give them our 28. we got a 28 that we're going to allow the, the museum to use for a while for a demonstration. Now you know how a flint and steel works. Come back and we'll let you fire one off. So that we had a bag. Well, we got some blanks here. We'll just let you pull a trigger. Pull <laughs> her back. And show you. Luckily, no biggie. The river there. You say thank you. Uh, and well, yes, yeah, see, it's our pleasure. Thank you. You guys, I hope you enjoy your day. Please ask questions. Yeah. Well, especially so ask them guys.
Go over and ask them guys. <laughs> no. You guys have a good day. All right. Yeah, I know now. Well, thank, thank you so much, guys. You're welcome. So. Don't you like that? Everybody got out of your way. Now, we, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm wondering if we could. Okay. Um, if we bring this right bench, here. that one little bench, put it right here. Yeah. Yeah. That's got all the clothes that you can sit out. There you there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you may take that quickly. You know what? We would have to do first. Oh batch by boiling it we'd get the laundry in over and we'd have we'd get that water that you brought over and we'd get it boiling and we'd boil our laundry for a good 15 minutes but because I got kids I don't want anybody getting too you know with too hot then after I got done with that and I would take you know I could take my stick and I could push that around in that boiling water and then I'd take everything out and I'd put it over in the next bucket and that bucket's going to have some soap in there so do you want to get in there and scrub? Oh. All right go ahead. Today we have got a load of socks and you're just going to take them and you're going to work them on this okay oh, and if you are a good laundress yeah it's a little cold today but that's better than getting burnt with hot water. You can hold on to this paddle like that. There you go. Now I always told my son if he didn't do a good job, I could use this paddle on something besides laundry. It is a dual purpose. That is a good tool. Now after I get them all cleaned in here, and then I'm gonna to have to check them, and these today are socks, so it's not nearly so bad, but we'd be looking for stains. And then as a good laundress, I have to know how to get the stains out. So if I had some blood stains or some juice stains, I'd use lemons on it, and that would help get it out. And if I had a grease stain, I'd use some dust from uh, bricks to help me get it out. And then if I had whites, now there's a couple of things, because do you want your whites to look dingy? No. And you know, my husband is a Marine, and the king only gives him one white shirt per year. So now I've got to get this clean. Well, there's a couple of ways that you can get to get clean. Okay, then, when you think you've got it clean, we're gonna put it over in another bucket, but let me check it first for you. Let's see how you did. I always like to get in there. Okay, now this right here, and that's a see on my bonus. socks. You know, I don't want stinky And what they did, oh. at point, Kathy and I did you do this? together, and I'll say to you what. Are you sure? Because my husband is a Marine and he's over there and he's got knives and guns on him and if he sees that you did this to his socks. <laughs> do you know what that means we're going to have to do when we get done with this? We have to darn all these socks too. Oh yeah, I mean it's a lot of work, isn't it? But you did a pretty good job. So now the third bucket is going to be for rinsing. So we're just going to throw him in there. But if I had had his white shirt, there's one way that I can get it nice and white, and that's if I use urine. And you know what urine is? That means when you have to go to the bathroom, we would add some of that to this water. Now that sounds really gross, and we didn't do that. <laughs> but that is how we would get, that's one of the ways we would get our whites really clean, because that, that has ammonia in it. Now we use bleach. 
And another thing we could have used, sugar came in a cone, kind of shaped like this, and it would have blue paper on it. And we could use that if, if you've heard of bluing, we could put that in there. Um, or we could soak our white laundry for a couple of weeks in this bucket with some lye soap, and then we would lay it out in the grass and we'd let the chlorophyll help to bleach it out. So we're really lucky we have no whites today, so you can scrub and get those. Oh, oh my gosh. What the heck? Why are you doing this? <laughs> what are you doing to my socks? <laughs> That's called summer socks. That is, those are summer socks. <laughs> but see, they wear out. And then, you know, I can't afford to throw these out, though. Would you, if you, these were your socks, you'd probably throw them out, right? But I've got a darning egg. And I, when these get dry. Where's my darning? It's not ways to go yet. <laughs> and sometimes they Temperature affects it and everything else, you know. Oh, yeah. But whatever what, we will still get whipping cream if we don't get butter. We will not let anything go. Away. I'm gonna it's use my great. darning egg. And what's the butter? Mine's wooden. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I butter. also have one that's a little tiny we'll gourd. And you'll put okay. that up so through that sock so through the bottom and it'll come out and we're just gonna try to do it quickly here. And we're gonna get this in here and we're gonna use this to hold it. And then I'm going to have to use my, my yarn or my um, thread and I'll go back and forth and I'll weave that and I'll fix that hole so that we can keep wearing these socks because we can't keep affording to have you ruin our socks. <laughs> but you didn't ruin them. We just wore them. We wore them out for marching in them. Yeah. So, he doesn't look too do sure you, what you're saying, Kat. Do, do you think that laundry is a little bit easier now? See, there's one that I darned. See, it had a hole. And then I I darned that and fixed that hole so that we can, we can wear it again. So laundry's a little bit easier today, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. So any, that is because I found this great picture of a laundress, and it's a, a very old painting. And I'll show you this picture of the laundress and her little boy is sitting while she does the laundry. And what's he doing? He's he's been blowing what? Bubbles. Yeah. So you, if you want to try that out in here, you can. When you get done with your sock there, you can blow a bubble with that. But um, yeah, so we'll stick that up there. <laughs> These are long socks. They are long socks. They are long socks. Um, and uh, that's just, you know, it's for warmth and it's for protection. Um, and then if you saw the guys who had the gaiters on next door, did you see the white? that they wear over it because I don't know our king was kind of stingy I think he gave them one pair of socks and one shirt for the year I don't know about you but that's that's a long time to be out here in the wilderness with just one pair of socks and one shirt so they wore gaiters so they could protect their socks and make them last longer so they didn't catch on the underbrush in the in the woods yeah I see that. I see that. I'm not supposed to know what that is, but I do see that because um, I thought, oh, yeah, hmm. a uh, yeah, a sergeant. Excellent, excellent. Well, why don't you go back further and why don't you be a uh, French and Indian War mid 1700s? Oh, yeah. You know, we have a lot of fun, too. Uh, uh, we have no tanks, I will say that. <laughs> and that's pretty cool. So, Ted, what do you, what do you think is more work, being a soldier or a laundress? I don't know. I think this laundress was a pretty tough job. <laughs> it's and like just, some hard work. Just even my bucket. If you feel my bucket today, this has been soaking. I had to soak my bucket for a week 
because you see how all these little pieces, when it dries out, all those pieces go wibbly wobbly. And even after a week, I could see a couple of drips still coming. So I need to, I spent an entire week just getting my bucket ready for today. Just soaking it and getting that wood and then see how sturdy it is now. But when it dries out, then all these little pieces just wibble and wobble. So there is a lot of work to it. And you know, I always used to laugh, you probably don't know this, you guys might, you know, when they always talk about doing your laundry on Mondays, and we kind of laugh because our grandmas did laundry on Monday, and, and then my grandmother sprinkled the water on them on Tuesdays, and then on Wednesdays she'd iron. Well, the reason that they did a lot of laundry on Monday was because if you were a rich household and you had a cook, the big meal was on Sunday. And then guess what, you probably had leftovers, which meant that the cook would have some free time and she could help with the laundry. And so that's why Monday ended up being um, the most common day for, for doing laundry. What so, today is Monday? Uh, no, today is Saturday. Saturday. Oh, yeah, Starting to form up. Now this one you can go ahead and wring out oh, and then you can hang it on the line to dry if you would please. And you can probably do this by yourself, but if you had a big thing, you'd need two of us. And we can do it together. Take that in. Alright, and let's twist. Just twist it and squeeze out as much as we can. Because the sooner we get, or the more water we got out of it, the sooner we're going to have dry laundry. Okay, alright. And what we'll do when that butter forms, there'll be a liquid on the top and we'll pour that liquid off and it's buttermilk and then we'll and use I that for baking husband, you put and we'll wash our butter because you have to wash all the buttermilk out of it otherwise you get stale butter you'll yeah, get it'll yeah. turn it on there. Should be great. Oh. and kathy's laundress Excellent. and Excellent. say her and i wanted to a, a, a bargain i tell you what if you My do some laundry Kathy. for me i'll provide so you butter you well this was a pound mold <laughs> so she knew she was getting a pound of butter yeah. but that's tray and this is a two pound no. so this was a little more decorative now this one is actually from the middle 1800s. This was a more modern one that was probably someone made it in the late 1900s. So, but boy, they're really made well. I will say that. I've, wow. I've used them to death, and they're still. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. And this is a butter bell. This is how they would have kept their butter on the table and fresh, because as you know, you put it in any kind of coal that's going to get hard on you. You'd fill that with water. You put your butter in here, like this, and your butter would stay fresh and cool. Oh, they were very inventive people. Yes, and this, of course, is a, is a French uh, 18th century butter dish, butter bowl, and so I could pour the buttermilk off easy, and I could just keep washing it, and pouring the liquid off until it ran clean. And what's the salt? Would you add the salt to the butter? If you wanted salt, you could put herbs in if you wanted to, but most of the time, you know, salt was everything. Yeah, right. Preservation. We just so kicks it hard. It's getting yeah, hard to do, it. yeah. So what's in here? Is it this just is what well, normally they would have done? Uh, they would have milked the cow, and they would have put the milk on like the counter overnight. And when the cream came off, that you skim the cream off. But I'm using heavy whipping cream here because I don't have. Okay, okay. So you take the cow, let, it, let the milk from the cow, let it. You take off the cream. You've the cream, heard the cream rises to the top, and that's exactly what it would do. And then you take the cream. You can see it's getting hard. It was oh, real easy at first when it was just liquid. Are you I supposed to go all the way down or are you just... Yes. There you go. Actually, you can't turn it with your, like this too. These women must have very strong hands. Oh, I'm... They, Do you have socks on? If you want socks on? I tell you, you really appreciate what we have now when you have seen what it took just to... Just to make, how how long, long would this take to do? Actually, it's going fast today. It can take anywhere from... Yeah. Half an hour to two hours. If the weather is not bad, it might take you all day. Mm. And normally this would not be my job. It would be her job. Uh, children, children churn the butter. They milk the cows. That's what the girls did. They did exactly so home with that. Here, can, you can do it. And um, <clears throat> the boys did basically <laughs> men's job. They would bring in the wood, help with the feet, the, the fields, and the girls would basically do the mother's job. But when you had 13, 14 children, it took a village. But they're great out there. Right. Shoes. And then so many women um, lost their lives because there's a word you uh, heard if you ever wonder if you ever did any ancestry search or anything, you find most of these guys are married three times. Right. 
either childbirth killed them or if they were building fires, fires killed a lot of women. And the French women were smarter in a lot of ways. The French women were because they wet the bottom of their skirts or their petticoats as they're called, and would wear them shorter. One thing, it, it kept your, your petticoat from fraying. And a lot of times it wasn't that important because they passed their, their clothing on so you don't know you might have a tall person, a sharp person. So, Interesting. Yeah, and of course, but, making clothes was very hard to do, right. and clothing was passed down. And they'll find a lot of pieces of clothing that was made in the 1800s that have been modified as the years went on. You know, it's, it's amazing what they did. But um, it surely wasn't an easy life. They talk about the cabins were so cold in the wintertime that they would take their, their high chairs and put the baby, like, 12 inches from the high chair and tie the baby in there, the baby would scream. But either it stopped the baby from freezing to death or crawling into the fire. So it was a rough, rough life. And of course, the mice were into everything you made. It was nothing, I mean, you had your, your lard, which you used to cook with, and you don't know there'd be a dead mouse in there, but they did, they just scraped it up. It was just too hard, it was just too difficult to start over. And like, in the cooking, now Kathy will make a soup today, and back in the 1700s, 1800s, they would make soup or stew, and they ate that the whole week until it was gone. Can you imagine a stew made on Sunday with no refrigeration, what it would be like on the following Sunday? But they ate it. They would put herbs in it, anything to cover. That's where they had a lot of culinary gardens. There is definitely Because it covered up the taste of that. Stew. Well, I'm and of course, and then if the children got worms going. from eating this, so, they would go to the garden and they would take yarn and, and make a tea. And the, the children would drink the tea and it would kill the worms. Oh, you're Thank you for so they had an answer for everything. <laughs> they knew how to do this. I hope you have a good day today. That's why I appreciate them so much. What they did, you know. Kids have no idea. No idea what it took. You know, everything's so easy now. You flip on a light and you got light. Of course, then you made your own candles. Everything you had, you made. And that's where they started to barter. And they thought, okay, I'll give you a pound of butter if you do half a dozen of pieces of clothing for me. Or I'll trade you candles for butter. Or eggs for And that's basically how the barter system started. It's kind of, you know, women can only do so much. But they didn't have money, so they had No, and they didn't have money, and so they bartered. That was another reason, sure. Sure, so it does, you know, Make a difference, but it was smart, smart on their account. Cut the workload, and they got what they needed. And, and you know, if you, if you read some of the, the history of what life was like here, as opposed to what it was like in, in France, yeah, I mean, this is this is pleasant by comparison oh. in many ways. And you know, you didn't deal with a disease. I mean, keep turning up. Okay. Um, you have to deal with a disease as like when you're in Paris, how everything was so close oh, yes. in. Peel it off. Oh boy, this is about ready to peel it off. And um, um, we're doing a uh, what we liked. Uh, awesome. We know we're from Fort Chartres. Uh, Right. Soup and today. when the soldiers came over here, they were probably maybe five, two, five, three. Mm -hmm. By the time a decade later, they were like five, six. Yeah, you know, we it liked to do food. a lot of soups. You didn't have to deal with you know because they were easy to do over the fire. It was a lot of ways. It was a lot of you know. But then you know, the again, bake oven well, takes eight hours. You walked out the do, uh, the back area of the fort, and the so, Mississippi was right um, there. So they dealt with you know that's an entire process. Um, you know, it's, so if that, you could, that was a uh, highway. If you could do a one so. pot meal, sure, was really good. Uh, you know, are you just lawyering? It's coming. It's just about butter. <laughs> See, oh, yes. the there's an entire load of Whenever, laundry in there to get scrubbing on. The water starts. <laughs> give, give your mother your uh, buttermilk stares starts grandma. rising off of grandma, the liquid. Grandma, sorry, then I'll be done. Yeah, and well, that was a compliment. Yeah, yeah, pull mold. up your sleeves and get get going on there some go. laundry get for heaven's sakes. No, it's not cleaning itself. It is not cleaning itself. No. And there was no warm or cold setting, and there was gold setting or hot setting.